Hello, welcome to Finishing Touch, a podcast from the State Soccer Network. My name is Riley James. Today's show is sponsored by Steezy. From comfort to function, Steezy thought of it all with their brand new React No Show and Adapt Essential Crew. Steezy, the athletic sock for you. Keep moving forward. Today on the show, calling in from Connecticut is a coach with 20 years of experience on three different levels of soccer. I cannot wait to talk to this guy, Coach Pedro Oliveira, as we talked about before the show. <laughs> coach, how are you doing? Great. Great, Riley. Thank you for uh, having me tonight. I appreciate I appreciate the opportunity that I have to uh, express my uh, my uh, love for the game and and uh, of soccer. And uh, let's let's have let's have a nice conversation here to, tonight. Absolutely. I, I want to start w- with with something first. We we hear the accent. How does a a Portuguese man end up in or a Brazilian? I don't want to assume end up in Connecticut. Well, long story short, family came, uh, my parents Portuguese, so family came over to the US while I was living in Brazil. Um, and then uh, um, I ended up coming from from there to here to uh, meet the family. And I've been here for almost 30 years. Um, and that's, um, that's why I uh, end up here in, in Connecticut. <laughs> so, it's a long story, but I try to make shorter. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's cold in Connecticut. There's a reason I live in the south. Yeah. It's it snows up there. <laughs> that, it's true. It's true. You know, when I came over, I did, I didn't even think about that. You know, Brazil, tropical country. You know, beautiful sunny days over there. You know, uh, but uh, you know, it's all good. I I I I love the 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 tri-state year. You know, Connecticut, Massachusetts, all that. So it's it's um it's it's lovely around here. The cold is yeah it's it can be can be uh, harsh sometimes, but uh it's uh it keeps uh, it keeps us on, on in, pers- in perspective, you know. <laughs> right, because the whole thing with the Brazilian World Cup in 2014 was that this is paradise even in their winter, and to move up to somewhere where it, it snows that's a wild decision on your part. But we'll, we'll move <laughs> on to what we're actually here to talk about. Yes, uh, the idea of coaching soccer on the all different levels in what you've done in the past. Uh, I want to talk about the youth. Obviously, developing habits is something kids do at, at early ages and all kinds of things. But can you talk about some of the bad habits you've seen from uh, youth soccer players and, and maybe what to avoid? Well, you know, uh, in, in, in specifically here in, in, in the U.S., um, you, you have to deal with a lot of uh, – a differentiation on, on levels of, uh, of, of of the game, how the the kids play the game, and you have to, as a coach, to adapt to that. Um, um, as the habits they have is, um, you know, it's more running with the ball than in where the country where I came from. It's all about touches on a ball, you know, the technique and all that. So, uh, and you have the talented players here that you have to. Uh, make that part of the game from them better and also incorporate the 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 the, the fitness part and all that stuff but uh yeah it's it's um for me what i found in, in a difference here was more the kids were more running in, into the ball you know than actually um utilizing the, the 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 soccer ball as as a tool to improve their 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 technique and 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 make the the game better so um, <clears throat> as a coach, I try to, to make sure my kids and the kids that I coach in, in the levels that I coach, um, they have a lot of touches on the ball. They understand how to play the game from there on, you know, and then as you move on into age groups, you know, then it becomes the, the, the conditioning part, the tactical part and, and all that stuff and the formations. Yeah, so, but I found more interesting that was like kids running you know, around with the ball without, um, you know, many um, comfort zone with the, touching the ball. So that that's what I found here. So obviously we we know about the, the Brazilian flair. You know, it's for famous for it. We've seen players use tricks on these balls and, and, and glide past defenders. Have you implemented some of that in your coaching on, on all kinds of levels? Just not as so much as like, you know, flicking the ball over your head to get past the defender, but maybe some – some tactical things and, and try to get the get the players more into space and, and create these kind of ooh and ah moments where, where people are kind of 
looking around, where, like where's the ball? Yeah, so for me, uh, I, my philosophy is always, you know, more time you have the ball, more comfortable you, you, you feel playing the game. And our uh, awareness of the field is important. See where you are positioning on the field. So then it comes into place uh, how you you put yourself uh, into the space available to receive that pass. And and after you make that pass, you follow your pass, and then you 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 continue the play, uh, uh, give, being an option for for the the your teammate. Um, uh, so it's it's all about. Uh, uh, using the tools of the athletes that you have, the the the, the capa capacity of the athletes that you have, and incorporate in, into the game. So um, I I need to see what kind of players I have to adapt to to the game. So that's the 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 idea and the philosophy that I have. Obviously, I I don't. I I'm, my philosophy is not a running game, but is uh, is quality on the touches, uh, building up from the back, finding the space, you know, uh, checking, you know, scanning where you are on the field and all that. So you make you make a good pass, you make purpose on that pass, and and the place will will flow uh, more uh, easily. So that's the 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 mentality that I try to incorporate in the players that I coach. Let's talk about maybe a higher level of, of, of youth soccer. So club soccer, this premier club soccer that you're involved in. When you pull kids for that, what is the expectation from them tactically to be able to, to perform, perform at a certain level? Yeah, so uh, when, you, when you get kids in the premier level club, you know, um, all of them, assumingly, uh, their, their expectation is to, to – to go far and 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 their, their objective is is to get a good a, a good uh, um, um, access to college you know make sure they 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 perform well over the years when they play for the club you know as they they move on into the age groups and everything else so as coaches our job is to make sure that we uh, we uh, we keep that that level high so that uh, you know. When they going into a high school and and then from there into the college, you know they understand you know to be an athlete, uh, soccer soccer player, you really need to dedicate yourself, you know, and that's why we demand uh, highly in our in our sessions, not just uh, on the on the on the conditioning part, but obviously on the on the con on the technical part and uh, con and uh, um, uh, tactical part as well. So, but depending on the age group obviously we build up from this the, the younger kids you know touches on the ball feeling comfortable how they 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 receive how they they trap the ball how they play a pass you know so things like that and as we move on into the age groups um that's when we start incorporating more the tactical stuff the technical stuff um in, into them so they they are looking to to be uh, leveled uh, for high school and for college when they reach that 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 scenario. So I heard you call it soccer. How how difficult was it for you personally to transition from calling it football to soccer and and that whole thing? Because I know it's a big deal for uh, people from from outside the U.S. Yeah, I mean, when I came over here, I didn't even know a foot, uh, let's say football was called soccer here. So I, I, I had to, you know, I, I now then I be, I understood why and why they were using that word because of American football here is big and all that. So and, you know, you have to respect the culture of every country. But around, I know, all over the world, fo football is football is not soccer, but you know, I, I kind of, uh, um, you know, adapted to that. And actually, I like the word. So uh, for me, uh, it, it differentiates, you know, from the American football to, to, to soccer. But when, when I'm around with my kids, with my players, I always tell them, you know, play football, play football, play the real football. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so they understand where, where, where that comes from. So, yeah, no, I, I do with so many people from all over the world and they come to major league soccer or they come to the u.s watching you know the u.s national team or anything 
and they hear soccer, 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 and, and they, it's just, it's a weird adjustment for a lot of people. So I was just curious on that. We can get back to some of uh, your coaching tips and accolades. I, you coached high school and are you currently coaching high school? Yes. Uh, I'm the head coach for the girls varsity, uh, uh, uh Bunnell high school in Stratford, Connecticut. Uh, I'm on my uh, second year there. Um, I took over the program last year during the pandemic, which was like a, really a, a very challenging time um, to take over a program. But, um, uh, you know, it's a public school in Stratford, Connecticut. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm building up the, the program, trying to implement my, my philosophy and all that stuff. So um, I, uh, I, I love the, the, the female game. You know the uh you know as well so and um yeah i i want to uh, to make sure gradually uh the program gets uh in a better place um you know oh, there is a lot of ta talent uh, uh within the 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 town and within the school uh, and, uh so i think we um we are in a good in a good place moving forward so especially now that we are having a full season this year because last year it was like really awkward, you know, a lot of uh, shutdowns and we had to quarantine a couple of times. So it was really, really a very challenging time, not just for the coaches, but for the kids itself. And even though now coming back from the long period of, uh, you know, the kids, you know, it's, uh, it's still being a, a little challenging. But um, um, yeah, I love I love coaching in high school. I, I, I love I love to give back to the to the community that I, I I serve my kids for, you know, I want to make sure that my kids understand that that we need to serve the community that we are live in and and play for. And so um, I, I I I I want to uh, make sure that that's part of the the program that I am I'm leading now. So um, yeah, uh, the the girls' game is is a beautiful game, uh, as you mentioned about the flair of the game. I think the in the high school side, the 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 girls have more flair than the boys. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I can agree. I played high school soccer uh, down here in Louisiana, and the girls were a lot better than us. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I want to talk about that. So, high school soccer is such an interesting thing, and and balancing grades and so many different things. What's your your message as a coach for the players on the, on the academic side? Uh, how, how do you help them balance and, and what's your expectation of them academically as opposed to on the pitch? Well, I could, uh, number one, they, uh, you know, when I, you know, when I meet my players in the first day of the season, I always tell them, you know, you're, you, you are here, number one, because of your academics. So you have to focus on that and uh, whatever you need from me as a coach and as a leader of the program, I'm going to try to facilitate uh, so that you can have um, a support uh, from me as a coach and, and and as the head coach of the program, so you are not uh, uh, incurring in challenging times with your you, with your grades. Uh, because number one, if you do that, if you come into that scenario, then you are not elig eligible to play until your grades are, are getting um, in the in the the right um, uh, numbers. So uh, yeah, so I, I reinforce to them that academics is number one. That's that that's they should be their focus, and I'm gonna support them whatever I can to 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 help that uh, that transition, you know. Um, and then um, yeah, I tell them after that, sports is part of that um, that. So uh, um, I always invest myself and the kids to dedicate themselves into the academic portion of it um, and it will make it easy for them to enjoy their the season while they're playing last but not least obviously we we all know about the success of the women's game here in the united states as far as the success of the women's national team now i don't know how much that goes into coaching um, because the men's national team was never good when I was in high school, so we never had that to look up to. But the the overall success and the overall pressure on getting more people into the women's game for the U.S. national team to pull from, do you talk about that at all with the just how good the U.S. women are at soccer and how it affects maybe some high school players? 
Oh yes, because uh, you know there is always the comp uh, comparing the 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 the, the men's side with the women's side on on the U.S. level, um, and and uh, you know the girls uh, in general in the U.S. the the uh, I believe there the last statistic was that uh, college soccer was uh, uh, ahead of the 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 boys soccer in commitment and 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 numbers uh, overall and it was actually i believe the third or fourth top sports in colleges um so and 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 my the girls that i coach uh, they they always you know use their their heroes from the us uh, national team as their their men as their you know uh, role models and that's what i try to uh, to transpire to them that you know if you want to be someone like that uh you have to dedicate dedicate yourself as an uh, student athlete and an athlete itself you know dedicated yourself every single time every single moment that you are on a field practicing and even when you are not practicing you need to to do touches on a ball and and make sure you do extra stuff on your own so you reach that level so yes uh, so on on the on my girls side of the high school yeah they're always talking about the 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 women's game and and even even the 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 game itself in general it's very popular uh among the 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 high school girls that uh they play soccer because with the announcement of the new second division women's league it's a lot more opportunity for women uh to play professional soccer in the united states and that's always a pathway that uh we, we talked about forever in the in the u.s so i'm happy that coaches like you all around this country are talking about that. I'm happy there's now a second division to the NWSL, and, and hopefully it leads to more and better play to the U.S. Women's National Team. But I just want to thank you for coming on. Uh, if you if you could uh, just give one piece of, of general advice to a player who is right on the the fringe of, of breaking through, what 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 would you tell them to to motivate them and, and to be the best player that they can be? Embrace the challenges that you face in your daily in your daily uh, uh, workouts in your daily uh, uh, sessions. Um, strive to be a better player every single day. Uh, dedicate yourself. Uh, don't be selfish. You know, work hard to be to be an example for the the player next to you, so she can see you as a role model. Uh, because you will go far if you if you go in that direction. So always embrace the challenges. Strive to be better. Uh, enough never should be enough. Always there is more. Um, be humble. Uh, respect uh, your peers around you, your teammates, your coaches. But number one. Uh, always, um, you know, strive to 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 be the best the best as you can in uh, in in soccer and in your position, and and don't be afraid of trying other positions as coaches like me ask to players to 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 play in a different position. It will make you a better player for sure. Because we we've seen that example again to keep bringing up the U.S. Women's National Team. We've seen that example. Kristen Dunn plays attacker for her club team and she's a left back for the national team just to be on the squad and be in the mix. So to be able to be versatile is a, a good thing. And I, I appreciate the value you brought onto the show. You were a fantastic time. Thank you so much for, for making this time coach Pedro. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate again for uh, giving me the opportunity to share a little bit uh, what I, I can share about the, a beautiful game of soccer and what I can uh, incorporate into in a daily basis and and share with people uh, uh, what I envision about soccer and one last advice to to the uh, boys and girls out there that play soccer body language is always important you know you know stay stay focused in what you have to do and engage and embrace every single day that's awesome, man. I, I certainly do appreciate it. And thank you for sharing your insight. Thank you. Have a great day. And thank you for the opportunity. Hi, thank you so much for watching the show. We really do appreciate it here at the State Soccer Network. We also have some socials for you to check out. Facebook, 
Instagram, and YouTube at State Soccer Network. And at the State Soccer Network, we also have a website, statesoccernetwork.com, as you can see right there. It's available in the show description with a direct link to find out how to sign up your local high school soccer team and contests and events to win prizes. We also have an iOS app available on the App Store. And remember the State Soccer Network, a place where you can become the next great American talent.